Okay, we've seen that sometimes light behaves as particles. For example, the black body radiation, the photoelectric effect, can only be explained using the photon model. In other words, treating light as a particle. But however, diffraction and interference can only be explained if light behaved as waves. So evidence for electrons being particles includes ionization, because when an atom is ionized, it loses 1.6 times to the power of minus 19 coulombs of charge. So it loses a discrete or a quantized amount of charge. Another piece of evidence is deflection in electric and magnetic field. So only particles can be deflected in electric and magnetic fields. So that's another piece of evidence for it being a particle. So de Broglie suggested, his hypothesis was that, well, maybe particles have wave-like properties as well. And he suggested a wavelength. He said the, the wavelength of particles is given by this equation here, where the wavelength is Planck's constant divided by the momentum or Planck's constant divided by mv. So if a particle can behave like a wave, he suggested maybe elect electrons can diffract as well. And later this was found to be true. It was shown later that when you direct a beam of electrons at a double slit like this, an interference pattern is formed. So this can only be explained if the electron is behaving as a wave going through both of the slits and interfering with itself. However, diffraction can only take place if the size of the gap is similar in size to the particle's wavelength. So in metal foils, the spacing between the atoms is small enough that it can diffract the electron beams. So the metal foil is acting as a diffraction rating. So we can use a diffraction rating in this to analyze what happens. Here we have the order number, normally we just use one. We've got the wavelength and the distance between the atoms inside the metal foil, and we've got theta, which is the angle. In this question, we need to show that a particle with charge Q mass m accelerate from rest through a potential difference of v has a wavelength given by this equation here. So firstly, it's being accelerated through a potential difference. So we use the electron gun equation, half mv squared equals the charge times the potential difference. And we also, because we have the wavelength here, we want to use the de Broglie wavelength equation, which is lambda equals Planck's constant over mv, which is the momentum. So quick shortcut, what to do is you multiply both sides here by m. So this gives us half m squared v squared equals m q times the voltage. Okay, then you move the two over to m q v equals m squared v squared. And now if you square root it, you get the momentum. So now we can bring this and put it there. So the wavelength of the particle is inversely proportional to the root of the volt accelerating voltage. What is the effect of increasing the electron gun's accelerating voltage on the diffraction pattern? So if I increase the accelerating voltage, this will cause the wavelength to decrease. So what, will this, what effect will this have on the pattern? So we can use the diffraction grating formula, d sine theta equals n lambda. So if the wavelength decreases, and we're interested in, let's just say we were interested in the, the first um, order here. Uh, and of course, the, this is um, the distance between the atoms is fixed. So we can just ignore these two. So sine theta will also decrease. In other words, theta also decreases. So the distance between the fringes, the, the rings, starts to decrease. So you start to see more uh, of the rings on the screen. So they get closer together.